Hello, this is Nathan Swain and Kelvin Smith. We will be presenting you our project for GIS Programming Winter 2013 class called MoMap Beta. This is a C-sharp application developed in Visual Studio. We'll give you a brief overview of some of the project and then go into the code and a demo. So the project requirements were to create a standalone desktop application in this case, we chose a soil profiler. Well, the requirements were to draw a soil cross-section line and see the longitudinal soil profiles that are extracted from elevation rasters that represent the different horizons in the soil. For the demo, our sample data comes from a tutorial on Aquaveo's website. So some of the assumptions that we make is that the user needs to input elevation rasters, not depth rasters, and that these rasters are derived from borehole data and interpolated. Otherwise, your plot will show upside down. The projection of your rasters needs to be in a planar projection and in meters in order for the units in the plot to match uh, what is in your, in your raster. And also, the line that you draw cannot be exactly vertical. Uh, if you do that, then no plot will appear. And the line that you draw needs to be within the raster extents, otherwise you'll get some no data values plotted in your plot. Some of the unique features of our of MoleMap is that we use a separate dialog to allow the user to select any raster or any line that they've uploaded. You can select multiple rasters or just one. And it works with the line drawn in any direction aside from exactly vertical. Plus, it's got this awesome, sweet mole icon. We'll just give you a brief overview of the algorithm before we delve into the code. Uh, the idea is the user loads soil data as elevation rasters, and then they draw a line. Then they select the rasters and a line from the dialog. And then for each raster, we extract the elevations along the line at approximately one cell width spacing. Then we record the distance along the line and the elevation at that distance. And we populate Z graph with this distance. Finally, it will bring up the plot. So we'll go ahead and show you a little bit of the code so you can see how this works. All right, let's go ahead and go into Visual Studio so that we can see how MoleMap works behind the scenes. There are two forms in MoleMap. First one is the main one that you're looking at right now. Second one is this data select form that the user uses to select the rasters and the line that they would like to use for the analysis. But most of our code is contained in this main form. So let's delve into that. We scroll to the top here. First thing we do is declare some global variables for this class. One of the most important ones is this export shell variable. This works with our plugins to tell it that this form is the shell. Our plugins that we use are GDAL, menu bar, shape editor, and zgraph to give us some nice functionality. Here's the constructor for the class. We declare this class as the shell, and we also initialize our extensions and the components. This bit of code, menu, menu bar, click, handles the quick event on the menu bar. I believe we just copied and pasted this. Works with the menu bar extension. Okay, this bit is worth mentioning. This loads our sample data so that you can get up and going and learn how to use MoMap very quickly. These items here handle the selection of our menu items. For example, this enables the select mode on the map. The rest are pretty, pretty similar, so we won't go into those. Uh, this is the help basic. It's a little different than the others. It just brings up a message box, box with some basic help in how to use MoMap. And then this is the MoMap load. Since we're using the plugin, I'll show you this form, the menu and menu bar are not loaded until the application loads. So we need to add our custom menu items by code. 
So we add four of them, map, mole, extensions, and help. And then here we add the simple action items under each menu. Uh, these include things for manipulating the map. The most important are this load rasters and map to mole that work with our process. Finally, we defined another class inside this form called global var that stores some variables that we use between the two forms so that we can pass data between them. So when you click our menu item, map to mole, before the dialog appears for the data select, we are going to populate a few fields in that form, namely the raster field, which will give you a list of all the rasters that are in the map, and also a list of lines that are in the map. Then our dialog will appear. Again, here's our dialog. So we have a list of rasters, list of lines, and uh, we validate the line selection so you can only select one line at a time. Here's the code for the form. We, uh, we turn our Boolean data OK to true this, uh, if the OK button is selected. And uh, then we get our raster and line selected items. Uh, if the cancel is collected, then we hide it and put our Boolean to false. So now the dialog is shown and we've clicked OK because we've selected our rasters and our line. We need to clear out a few variables so we get a new plot each time. And these functions right here take what was selected in the data select form and put them into variable, global variables that we can use in this code, which is from the mole map form. So as we go through here, we uh, start out going along the line and getting our elevations. So we clear our Z graph plot and we start out by stepping along the line here. Uh, so after initializing a few things and a lot of variables, we set up our first two uh, first two nodes that you clicked in your clicked out on your line, figure out our slope and the distance between those two points, and then we go through and step along each cell width along that line. And we are going to stop incrementing cell width to cell width when the distance within or distance between the first click and the this point that we are looking at the elevation is the same between the two nodes. Uh, these nested switch and case statements verify that we are traveling along the line that you drew and not some imaginary line. So we are incrementing in the proper direction, which allows us to then view a cross section in any direction except vertical. Once we have the x, y, and z coordinates of that point along the line, we uh, put it into a dot spatial coordinate point, calculate a distance from the clicked point to the immediate point that we're getting the elevation, and then we populate our, our arrays that we will use in ZGraph, our distance array which calculates the total distance from the first point clicked to the elevation and then the elevation itself. We also write out a comma delimited text file so you can view your data, uh, your raw data in Excel or whatever program you like. Next we do our ZGraph uh, initialization and populate our variables for ZGraph. ZGraph takes an X and Y, uh, an X and Y array. Our Z distance and Z Z are technically lists. So we convert our lists to arrays and then populate those here. And that's what shows up in our plot. Next, we wanted to randomize the colors of the different 
line horizons. That made it so it was easier to view and better overall picture. So we randomize our red, green, blue, and then we pass those in here for the different rasters. So they all show up as a different color. Uh, we set our line widths and set up our plot so it has a, uh, the titles we want. And then we refresh it and switch to that view in our uh, in our design here. If the OK button is not selected and that Boolean data OK is false, this message box will show up uh, saying you have to select at least one line and one raster. So now to show you our application, um, I'm going to show you how it works to validate that we have everything selected and then Nathan will do it correctly. So here's our application. You can resize it if you wish. Um, I'm, you can uh, add data through the add layer command. I'm just going to go to our mole menu item and load our sample rasters. Then using shape editor plugin, create a line. And I will create a, another line as well so that you can see that we do indeed have multiple lines when we populate when we populate our select dialog. Now I'll go back to the mole and click map to mole. Our dialog appears. You have to individually select the rasters you wish and then the lines as well. So I'm going to unclick all my rasters and have a line selected and when I click OK I do not have that selected. Um, so now I will uh, let Nathan show you how to properly do it and how ZGraph looks. Okay, we'll go ahead and add another line so that we can show you that it works in all sorts of directions. Our favorite is a diamond. Right click to finish. All right, and then we go to the mole menu, map to mole. Select all of these rasters, and I'll select our new line and hit OK. And now you can see the plot that ZGraph has. All of them are labeled according to the raster, and you can see that it goes down and back up, just like you would expect with our little diamond. Okay, that's Map to Mole Beta. Thank you for watching our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it.